Hello, everybody. This is chapter 21. This is part two. This is going to be something that I would recommend that you put on your computer screen. Uh, it's going to make it much easier for you to see. And also, I would probably get a pen and paper out and look in the description below because I will tell you the timestamps as to when you'll be able to see certain things. Uh, so this is definitely a work with me, work alongside of me kind of video. With that being said, I'm going to take the first section out for you to uh, kind of listen to what I'm going to say about RESPA. So I took a little bit of time out for you guys so that if you're watching this, um, you could have a good section of this where you're just listening, you're getting maybe your pen and paper ready, and you're trying to uh, work through the problem that I'm going to give you in a little bit. So first we want to talk about what RESPA is. You're going to hear a couple of different things kind of mushed into one. You're going to hear RESPA TILA, spelled T-I-L-A, um, and TRID, and HUD-1. So, Stu, can you unpack all of this for us? Absolutely. So, RESPA is referred to as the Real Estate Settlements and Procedures Act. There is a lot of minutia that goes behind this, but this is really for residential properties. Specifically, they do one to four family properties, okay, that are going to be financed with the first or second mortgage, okay? So this is something that there's going to be some sort of financing in there. So if it's a cash deal, no, that does not count, okay? Um, investment properties will not be associated with this, okay? RESPA will not apply. So what RESPA really is directed towards is the uh, lending industry, and it's really directed towards the settlement services and some of the things that they say you cannot do is receive kickbacks. So what happens is you can't get um, some sort of compensation for recommending a, uh, a, a settlement service uh, vendor. So let's say an attorney, a, a title company, things of that nature. Now, something that I will point out, and people have asked me this, they said, Stu, you know, I worked with a, a real estate company. They referred X, Y, and Z. That's absolutely fine. It's 100% fine to refer and recommend different service providers, okay? As long as there is no monetary compensation or there is nothing of value that is given to that person for recommending them. Let's say, for instance, I have a title company that I always use, and then all of a sudden they give me tickets to the Giants game. Um, that's a concern. That's something that could be a RESPA violation, okay? It can't be seen that they're giving me some sort of compensation or kickback or fee for referring business to them, okay? That would be considered a RESPA violation, okay? Um, so it's something that it's really, and, and some, here's another misconception. A lot of real estate agents who have been in the industry for a long time say, you must refer out three different service providers. You must provide out three different vendors and let the buyer choose. Yes, the buyer does have the choice. The buyer does not have to use any services, um, as does the seller. Seller doesn't have to use any particular services whatsoever. Um, it's something that if you strongly recommend someone and there is no kickbacks being given, then it's absolutely 100% fine. And so if there are no kickbacks being given and you're like, no, this is the best one, I think, in my professional opinion. That is absolutely 100% fine. There is no requirement. There is no law. There is no regulation. There is no ethics that says you must refer X number of vendors whenever you're referring any kind of vendor for settlement services, whatever the case may be. So with that being said, RESPA does regulate against any kind of kickbacks, regulations like that. And again, I mentioned a couple other things, TILA, T-I-L-A, which is the Truth and Lending Act, also referred to as Regulation Z, which is the requirement for all fees whenever advertised or discussed to be um, all fees, all uh, interest rates, all basic uh, qualifications, basically everything that could be known about something when you are advertising or making known to someone the uh, minutiae or finer detail about a, a loan program, 
all of those details need to be available and need to be accessible, okay? So it's something that they all must be there present in the same place. Now, you're probably saying, so what is TRID and what is a HUD-1 and what is a closing disclosure? So the TRID is basically an integrated disclosure of TILA and uh, RESPA, okay? So it kind of made this little weird amalgamation. We used to have for our closing disclosures something that we would refer to as a HUD-1 form, but since the advent of um, a couple of things have changed in the minutia of what we do in regards to closings. And do you need to know that? A lot of people always ask me that. Do I need to know all this stuff about uh, TRID, TILA, HUD, no, what you really need to know is RESPA has to do with kickbacks. Kickbacks are illegal, okay? That's really, that is probably the most important thing you could take out of RESPA. The closing disclosure is also known as TRID, which is the integrated disclosures. That formerly was the HUD-1 form. And what we're going to do is actually go through a closing disclosure. So what a closing disclosure is, basically, is where you will have a credit and debit to the buyer and the seller. And it is important to understand that they do not necessarily are going to go one and one where $10 to the seller, $10 to the buyer. Um, it, it might not work like that. And you'll see as we go through it. So this is the point where I'd probably take out a pen and paper. I'd probably start taking some notes down. And I'm also going to timestamp this in the description. Okay. So here is a scenario. The Smith family listed their home on March 21st under a six-month exclusive right to sell listing. The property is located at 123 E Street in Belmar, New Jersey. Little known fact, that is where the E Street band came from. So Bruce Springsteen's from Freehold, New Jersey. But E Street is a good old street in Belmar, New Jersey, right by the beach. And the Smiths agreed to pay a 6% sales commission for selling their home at a listed amount of 425000 On April 15th, the Madison family entered into a purchase agreement, uh, a purchase and sale agreement with the Smiths for the listed amounts of 425. The Madisons deposited $1,000 with their attorney and agreed to post an additional 41500 within 10 days. The buyer secured a conventional loan of $340,000 with an interest rate of 7% per annum. And if you don't know what per annum is, that's okay. That's basically per year, okay? Um, the contract states that the seller agrees to pay off the existing mortgage with related expenses. The buyers will assume the hazard insurance policy. All prorations are through the closing date of May 14th. Okay, that probably should read May 15th. I think that's what I used as a closing date on everything else. So I apologize about that. That should say May 15th. I actually put that in there. Okay, now let's go down to a little chart that will give you everything that you would need um, for the to, to calculate this. So again, this is something that I'd probably pause it right here. Take down a couple things and then again see how you do with just plug and play on this one. Now, this is it's not easy. It's not easy to get to the final numbers. So let's just go line by line. So we have the annual taxes, 8,280 paid through July. Now you're probably asking me, Stu, I didn't see all this information in the top scenario. That's right. This is additional information I'm giving you so that you understand and you could calculate everything. Okay. So the annual taxes of 8280 paid through July. Realty recording fee required by law. So actually, that should be the realty transfer fee. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. This is a specific, um, this is a specific uh, New Jersey uh, uh, fee that the sellers will pay. Okay. This is something that's always paid by the sellers. Buyer's attorney fee is $1,200. Buyer looks like they're also going to be paying two discount points. Survey is going to be 120. Title insurance is 1700. Recording of documents, I put down that it's 70 bucks, 50 for the deed, 20 for the mortgage. That may vary. Existing mortgage balance as of May 15th. So the existing mortgage that in the top thing, the Smith said, hey, we're paying that off. It's going to be 44,000. Monthly interest on existing mortgage balance. 275 last paid on 
April 20th. Keep in mind keywords here, monthly, annual, things like that, annual taxes, monthly interest. And remember what's paid, what's calculated on a 360-30 schedule. And 360-30 means 360 days in the year, 30 days in every month, regardless of how many actual days there are. Title search we're saying is 160. And interest on mortgage to June 1st, paid to lender in advance. So that's everything that we need to know. Now we're going to go to a spreadsheet. So let me melt your brains. Here we are. So, and I found that 125 Zoom is the best Zoom for this. So let me tell you what I'm looking at here. And again, every single debit and credit are not going to necessarily match because there are some things that might just simply be a debit to one. That means that what we're trying to figure out is num there's two things we're trying to figure out when we're looking at a closing disclosure. We're trying to figure out how much money the buyer has to bring to close. And we're also trying to figure out how much money is the seller going to walk away with after their fees. Okay. So first thing is the purchase price. That is always a debit to the buyer, credit to the seller. That is one of the things it's always going to mirror, okay? Now, the next, earnest money. So that's unique to the, the buyer, okay? So we have the buyer here, and the buyer paid $1,000 in escrow, okay? And that's being held, and that is going to go towards a credit because they don't need to bring that $1,000, right? Because, again, we're trying to figure out how much money do they need to bring in addition to what we already have, okay? An additional deposit. We're going to treat additional deposits just the same as we would earn money. So it's going to do exactly the same. And here's the thing. It's a credit to the buyer, not a debit to the seller, because that, that wouldn't make sense. Because it's we're not taking that money away, but we're crediting it towards the amount that the buyer does not have to bring to closing to get off of that 425 credit that they owe there, right? That's a debit, okay? So what happens is we're trying to figure out how much more money do they need to bring to closing. So survey. Survey is going to be a debit to the buyer in this scenario that we're giving you. It's a 120 debit. Then we have the first mortgage proceeds. People get confused with this. First, the mortgage proceeds. Is that a credit or a debit to the buyer? That's a credit to the buyer because, again, we're working off of the 425000 and we're saying that's the nut we have to crack in addition to other fees. So what do we need to bring in addition to the table? So they're taking out a loan of 340000 So if they're taking out a loan of 340000 wouldn't that be going towards the 425 that they owe. So that's a credit to the buyer. Okay. Next one. Title insurance is usually paid by the purchaser as it's their title. It's a one-time premium. In the first part of this chapter, I discussed why it's a one-time premium and why you're not paying for that monthly, like um, like every other insurance or even annually. So that is a one-time premium of 1700 in the example I'm giving you. Okay. Interest to be paid on June 1st. So let's look at the calculations of this. It's We said that it was a 7% interest per annum. And we said that, annum, that, that interest is going to be paid, uh, calculated and prorated based off of, based off of the uh, 360.30. So let's take a look at what we have here. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how much the interest is annually because, again, it said 7% per annum, which is annual. And if we multiply 340 by 7, we would get 23,800. If we divide that by, um, whatchamacallit, by 360, we get the daily interest, okay? The daily interest on this is $66.11. And if we multiply that by 15, because again, we're going base off of a 30, and that is to be paid on June 1st. Because if you remember where we went before, it was June 1st was the date we were shooting for. We are closing on the 15th. If we calculate a 15-day 
uh, closing, that will give us 15 days that we have to account for, which is 992. Okay, 992. And that is going to be a debit to the buyer. Recording documents. Recording protects the buyer, so it gives constructive notice. Again, something else that we covered in the very first part of this chapter. $70. Debit to the buyer. Okay. Now, pay off of the existing mortgage. That is a debit to the seller. The seller owes that money. So what happens is they're going to be paying the $44,000. And they're going to take that off of the credit that they're already getting. Next one interest on the existing mortgage. So we have to calculate a couple things on the existing mortgage uh, interest. So the last payment was made on April 20th. They're closing on May 15th based on a 30 day schedule. That's 25 days, right? 10 days to get us to April 30th, right? And then an additional 15 days off of that. And something that we knew beforehand was that the monthly interest was 275. So what we need to do is figure out what the daily interest is, and then multiply that by 25. And we're going to get 229.16. I'm leaving off the cents to make this a little easier. 229 is where we're going with that. Okay. Next one is the commission to the broker, typically paid by the seller. So that you take the sales price, right? The sale price of 425 multiplied by 6%, which was the commission. Keep in mind, all commissions negotiable, okay? So there are no set commissions. So this example, we're using a 6% commission. Now, let's go on to the prorated taxes. So the annual taxes were 8,280 and they're paid through July. So therefore, the taxes are prepaid for 75 days, right? The prorated amount is a credit to the seller because they've already paid it, right? And a debit to the buyer because the buyer basically has to pay that back. So what happens is you have to find out the daily amount to multiply that by 75. So 23 by 75, and that's 1725, debit the buyer, credit the seller. Again, seller has already paid this in advance, so we need to credit them that money because they're not going to be in the property during that time. However, the buyer is. So the buyer needs to come up with that money in, in addition to, right? In addition to. Title search. Uh, buyers typically debit on the debited on the title search. So that's another fee that the buyer would incur. The New Jersey Realty Transfer Fee. I was talking about that on the other one. I calculated it for this one based on the realty transfer fee schedule that they weren't getting any discounts for being a senior citizen, veteran, or anything of that nature, or disabled. So I, again, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do that. You can. There are resources. Literally, you Google it. You could knock yourself out figuring out New Jersey realty transfer fee. I calculated that for us, and it's $34.55 based on the information that we have. Okay. Now, discount points. Now, keep in mind this. Discount points are paid off of the loan amount, not the sale price. So that's why 425 isn't in there, okay? So right now, you're looking at 340 by 2%, which is because we said that there were two discount points in the example we were giving. So that's 6,800 is something else that they would have to come to the table with, along with the attorney fee. So if we're looking at all of this, okay, the seller is getting credited um, basically four, 426725 and their debits are 73184 meaning that they're going to walk away with 353541 And then when you're looking at the buyer, they're going to have to come to the table at closing with an additional 55267 to cover their debits that have not been covered by all of their credits. So, guys, I, I hope that helped you out. Uh, I hope that you got a lot out of this one because this one was a doozy and a half to put together for you. So, again, pause it. And I suggest that going through this again, kind of finding out where you might have had some issues or concerns. And of course, put some comments down below if you have questions or there's something you'd like to see me explain more. And uh, if not, 
You guys have a great one and keep on watching.